Hello everyone, I'm Ian from Creative Visuals and today I have something kind of important to say at the start of this video. So on Friday evening, Ottawa and Gatineau actually had a tornado tear through uh, quite a big portion of the city, leaving about all the city without hydro. I actually just got mine back this morning and it was quite a dramatic event. Uh, I've never experienced a tornado before, never thought I would living in Ottawa, but Friday proved me wrong and I just want to say how thankful I am that no one was killed. There were a few people injured but no one was killed after this huge storm. I think in one place it was an F3. People lost their entire homes. And I have a little film here I made just to show you guys how devastating any any natural disaster can be especially if you've never experienced one before because it is a real eye-opener so let's go right into this so the five m's of making a movie include mood motion movements moments memories so to find out what mood you want your video to be about and this may even be before you get your camera out is you have to ask yourself this one question and that is what feeling do you want your video to evoke do you want it to be happy sad dramatic important comedic Whatever it is, you have to decide before. And then you can use the types of shots in your video, the way you shoot, the way you use your camera to evoke this feeling. Now some of the most important factors to create the mood of your video include depth of field. Do you want to separate the subject from the background or do you want them to blend together so that there is no separation between the foreground and the background? You also need to think about your focal length. This shot was taken at 16 millimeters, while this shot was taken at 200 millimeters. Why am I doing this? Do you want your subject to be in shadow or do you want the light to be shining right on them? Maybe you want to have a backlit scene or maybe you want it to change throughout the shot. It is all up to you and it all changes the mood. First decide on the time of day because the time of day will dramatically change the lighting in your video as well as if it's a cloudy day or a sunny day, if it's noon, if it's seven, it'll depend on if it's a sunset or if the sun is high in the sky and you have really harsh light or like I said, that beautiful golden hour. I'd just always shoot in golden hour if I had the option. Now you have everything on the outside of your camera ready. You have the right lens on and you are ready to shoot. But now you need to decide what camera settings to use. You need to decide on your shutter speed and the accompanying aperture that will work with that, which is preferably double the shutter speed as your frame rate that you are recording in, which you also have to decide now in motion. Now, I'm not sure if anyone noticed, but I went from recording in 24 frames per second to 120. And I'm sure the amount of motion blur is significantly less. And think little things like these can completely change your shot. But when should you be recording in these frame rates? For example, if you are just recording a simple shot like this, someone walking by, that you're not gonna speed up or slow down or anything, it's easy just to throw your camera down in 24 or 30 frames per second, and the result will look good with a decent amount of motion blur. But if you have something with a little more motion, then you need to shoot at a higher frame rate so that you can slow down. Because if you shoot this at 24 or 30 frames per second and try to turn it into slow motion, you're gonna get a jello-y, juddery mess. But it gets even more complicated than this because there's more than just speeding up and slowing down a clip. What if you wanna put it in reverse? Like you want me to drop this rock and then pick it back up. Or maybe you wanna make it look like I'm biking in slow motion. And backwards. Your mood is set. Your camera is all ready to go inside and out with your camera settings and your lens, your focal length, everything has been decided. You're out there at the right time of day to capture that exciting moment. But now you need to decide how you're gonna move your camera to capture it. How you're gonna capture your subject and get the viewer's attention and make your video stand out from all the other ones out there. So how you're gonna do this is with your camera movements, which is our next M. So to start, there are many, and I mean many camera movements. Just a few of them include rising, lowering, panning, tilting, sliding, static, revealing, close up. I think motion, that's probably what comes to mind, just how you record the shot. But there's actually a lot more to it than this. 
You can also get in things like using the foreground and background together, adding camera shake either in camera or in post to your footage, walking, scary stories. So with that out of the way, that pretty much wraps it up for how to shoot the video. And the other two M's are actually in post-production to make your video really stand out and get an amazing movie in the end. But I just want to mention before I go there, since this would be the part where you go and shoot, this isn't just as simple as it is. And if you have done any photography in your life, a lot of it carries over to video work too. Now what you want to remember is a few of the key rules, some of which include leading lines, rule of thirds, rule of odds. Now with that out of the way, let me make it even more confusing for you and say the only way to get extremely good videos is to occasionally break these rules completely. Because eventually, if we're all following the same rules, we're gonna run out of things to record. And every video is gonna look so similar from the last that nothing is ever gonna be new. So what we need to do is get out there, follow the rules, and occasionally make our own. If you have an idea for a video, do it. Don't worry about the rules, use them where you can, and where you have your own idea, do it. Because no one says these ideas and these rules are the only ones out there. Your ideas are worth being heard. So make sure if you have one, you get out there and you record it. So with all that out of the way, let's move on to the fourth M. Fourth. Fourth M of filmmaking. Okay, so now you're at home, you have all your footage on your computer, and you need to decide which of all these clips are the most important and which moments, that is our fourth M, you are going to add and incorporate into your video. The ones that are going to be most crucial to uh, portraying your mood, the feeling that you want to evoke from your footage and from your video. You have to put in the ones that are going to be the most detrimental to putting across your story the way you want it to be told and leave the other ones out maybe till the end or maybe all together and just put in the stuff that is going to make your video great because if you add all the stuff in all at once and you just don't care about which one's better than the other in the end your video is going to be meh but if you add in all the video that is the best the ones that you know are people are going to feel the ones that people are going to really enjoy your video is going to be a lot better because it's going to be filled with the things that you are really proud of rather than the footage that's just it's okay it's usable don't use usable footage use great footage there is a difference if you need to use some here and there that's just okay that works but what you want to do is aim to have as much of that great video throughout the entire film because that is what's really going to make your film stand out from others and make it well great now finally once you have chosen your footage and it's all on your timeline what you're going to want to do is to move on to the fifth m which is memories what do you want the viewer to remember about your video? Once they've seen the footage, once they've seen how you've put everything together, what is it that they're going to remember? And one of the things that can really make them remember your video is by adding music that goes along with it, sound effects, video effects, transitions, different colors, different themes, whatever it may be that spices up your video. It's just that salt, that little sprinkle of spices on top of your video that really makes it great. And what you can do to do this is just add in simple transitions, add in more dynamic ones where you're using your footage, maybe a dolly zoom, whatever it is that makes your footage really immersive and turns that footage into a film and makes it evoke a feeling, the one that you want the viewer to feel and the one that you want them to remember. So those are my five M's for making a movie or a short film. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I had a really good time making this video. I know I haven't made one in a while, but with all this stuff with the tornado, and as you can see, I got a new computer, and I'm still trying to learn how to use the Mac, but it is going pretty good, pretty, pretty okay. It's different, but I'm really enjoying it. Final Cut Pro, I like it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, I will talk to you in my next video. Get out there, record something. If you have an idea, please bring it to life. Do not just sit on it because eventually you're just gonna forget about it. It's gonna be in your past. If you have an idea, get out there behind the camera. It doesn't matter if it's your phone or your camera camera, whatever it is, get out there and record photos, videos, whatever it is. Get on your computer, edit it, get creative and have a great time. So remember that. Thank you once again for viewing and th I thank goodness that everyone is okay after this tornado. It was 
absolutely insane. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and stay creative.